You want a war? You're gonna get one. Forget the lies, the money. We're in this together and through it all. They said that nothing's forever. Welcome back to January 12th, 1998, and welcome back to Reliving the War. Tonight, Raw comes from Penn State University, while Nitro takes place in Jacksonville. The WWF presents the 1998 Raw Rumble later in the week, and you can expect a full review video on the channel, as always. As for WCW, things have gotten a little crazy in regards to the World Heavyweight Championship, so let's do a quick Thunder recap before we compare Raw and Nitro. Alright, so the tape, the elusive tape of the Hogan vs Sting Nitro match from two weeks ago. The remainder of the match was shown on Thunder. After the Stinger splash, Randy Anderson got knocked out, but Sting still applied the Scorpion Deathlock. Hogan tapped out, but there was no referee. Nick Patrick ran down and Sting let go of his finisher. The Stinger then went after Patrick and this gave Hulk a chance to pin the champion. And Nick Patrick counts to three. Fans in attendance thought Hogan just won the WCW Championship. Sting takes out Patrick as Randy Anderson Anderson wakes up and the match continues on as if nothing had happened. Hogan finds himself in the Scorpion Deathlock once again and again he taps out. Randy Anderson calls for the bell and now it looks like Sting's retained the heavyweight title. JJ Dillon comes down to present the belt to Sting and Eric Bischoff then shows up. Bischoff attacks Dillon and he tries to take the belt away. Sting hits the Scorpion Death Drop on EZE and then a big old fight breaks out between the NWO and superstars of WCW. After the tape airs, Dillon calls Sting and Hogan to the ring and a decision gets made regarding the heavyweight championship. It's getting held up. The world belt is being vacated. Sting speaks for the first time in a long time. He says JJ Dillon's got no guts. And as for Hogan, you're a dead man. We see the NWO arriving to the arena. Kevin Nash says he took out Randy Savage last week because Macho took a shot at Bischoff, and Nash was just putting out the fire before Randy attacked anyone else. Hogan says the New World Order's fine, the bigger problem is the World Heavyweight Belt, and the NWO are going to fix that problem tonight on Nitro. Randy Savage did not arrive to Nitro with his NWO teammates, and Kevin Nash tells Mean Gene that Savage doesn't want none of Big Sexy. On Raw, DX are also arriving to the arena and we see inside their limousine. Triple H takes a shot at Ric Flair to start things off. One week out from the Royal Rumble and Oh, my Hunter wants Sean to say that thing he always says, and HBK says, what, I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Hunter says, no, not that old crap, the other thing. So Sean says he's the showstopper, Hunter says his buddy's the icon, and HBK says he's the main event before Hunter announces there's going to be a full moon in Penn State College. The commentators announce a Royal Rumble number draw taking place tonight on the show along with a Mike Tyson announcement. And it's finally time for our first matches. A fatal four-way tag team match on Raw and Jerry Flynn vs Goldberg on Nitro. The tag team match on Raw includes the Headbangers, the Godwins, the Truth Commission and the Outlaws. The Outlaws get their asses kicked at the opening bell as JR says there's rumours going around that Mike Tyson's gonna be at the Royal Rumble. The Godwins watch as the Outlaws get taken out and Big Henry attacks Thrasher when things settle down. Michael Cole reminds us that this is not an elimination match as Thrasher lands a few drop kicks. Mosh and Recon then do a little work and the Outlaws are not getting tagged in as the match continues. The other three teams are doing all the work here. The match ends when Recon finally tags in Billy Gunn. Phineas throws Billy into the headbangers and Gunn goes down after a clothesline. Road Dog has to save his partner from taking the slop drop. When Henry takes care of James, Gunn pulls out a pair of brass knucks. Phineas gets whacked and the Outlaws win the match. Nothing special at all, the Legion of Doom take on the Outlaws at the Royal Rumble once again, but LOD are not on this week's episode of Raw. On Nitro, Jerry Lynn with an F thinks he's being smart by attacking Goldberg early and the two men roll around on the mat for a bit. Goldberg tries a cross arm bar and he ends up pummeling Goemon on the mat. A rolling leg lock from Goldberg keeps the competitors on the canvas. The two get up and Flynn goes for an arm bar himself but he can't overcome the power of Bill Goldberg. The mullet almost gets knocked off Lynn's head here and Goldberg's going absolutely nuts tonight boys, watch out. 
Flynn doesn't know when to just stay down. He kicks Goldberg into the ropes, but that leads to a spear. Goldberg then performs the jackhammer, and Bill wins the match. The crowd didn't stop making noise from bell to bell, and you can feel Goldberg's intensity through the screen. Good stuff, and a much better way to open up the show when compared to Raw. Goldberg defeated Big Mongo on Thunder and Barry Horowitz on WCW Saturday Night, so that means Goldberg leaves Nitro tonight with 19 straight victories. Today's video is brought to you by DraftKings. WWE Clash at the Castle happens this weekend in Cardiff, and to celebrate what's sure to be a historic event, DraftKings, an official gaming partner of WWE, has another $10,000 up for grabs this weekend. Playing for your share of ten grand is easy. Download the DraftKings app, sign up using promo code BIOS, and enter DraftKings free to play WWE pool. Answer questions like who's gonna win and who's gonna make a surprise appearance, and the customers with the the most correct answers get their share of $10,000. So if you think you can predict WWE results, then you might want to give this a try. Download the DraftKings app now, sign up using promo code BIOS, enter the free WWE Prediction Challenge and get your share of $10,000. Only at DraftKings, official gaming partner of WWE. Steve Austin cuts a promo next on Raw while the action continues on Nitro with two matches, Black Cat vs Marty Jannetty and Dean Malenko vs Chris Benoit. The camera crew were waiting for DX's limousine to pull up and they caught Stone Cold arriving to the arena instead. Austin then took out the Godwins backstage, and Stone Cold then makes his way down to the ring to talk about the Raw Rumble match. Michael Cold says Austin seems to be continuing what he started last week, and Stone Cold says you're damn right son. Last year Stone Cold won the Raw Rumble and he got his title opportunity taken away from him, but he isn't gonna cry and he isn't gonna moan. If you step into the ring this Sunday, you're gonna get thrown out of it again. Cold says Austin's a marked man and he could be in trouble during tonight's Royal Rumble draw, and Stone Cold asks Michael for a pen. Luckily enough, Michael carries one at all times and Steve draws a target on himself that looks like a giant asshole. Stone Cold says he isn't a hard man to find, anyone who wants a shot can come to the ring right now. This is Steve Austin's time, there will be no BS from the WWF office this time around, and Cold may think Austin's a marked man, but Austin thinks Michael's full of you know what. That's the bottom line cause Stone Cold said so. That's all good Mr Austin, but you forgot one thing, one real motherfucking problem. Steve Blackman's in the Royal Rumble this week good sir, and and don't you forget it. D-Generation X then pull up to the arena, but they can't get their limo in. A WWF truck blocks the entranceway, so China and HBK get out and they try to find the driver. Apparently, DX have a big announcement later tonight that concerns the Undertaker's family. The Nitro main event gets announced during Black Cat's entrance, the Steiners defending the tag team titles against the Outsiders. Black Cat here is best known for his work in Japan, but he's got his hands full tonight with Party Marty. We haven't seen Gennetti since December 1996 when he was still teaming up with Leaf Cassidy. He's using the Hollywood Blondes entrance theme here by the way for some reason, and the match he has here is nothing to write home about. He takes a flapjack before countering a corner attack with a sunset flip, the two get to their feet and Marty performs a super kick, Black Cat fights back with strikes, a shoulder block and an elbow drop, and Black Cat performs this impaler DDT right here that makes the crowd gasp. This was the move of the match. Marty answers right away with a spine buster and he wins the match with a rocker dropper. Mike Tanay says the move's now called, get this, the showstopper. Marty Jannetty wins his Nitro debut match and it looks like WCW are focusing on bringing in old WWF guys. We have had Rick Martel, the Berserker and now Marty Jannetty in the past two weeks. Randy Savage, Scott Hall, Tenzan and Miss Elizabeth arrive at Nitro, and Mean Gene Okerlund tells Randy that Big Kevin Nash was talking shit about him earlier on. Savage wants to know what Nash said, but Mean Gene says no more. Things aren't looking too good for the New World Order. Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit had another match while the flock watched from ringside. Tony Schiavone says that Benoit vs Raven has been booked once again for pay per view, and this match is scheduled to take place at Sold Out. Malenko and Benoit tried to find out who had the best chin lock while Davy Boy Smith could be heard laughing from the UK. Chris pulled off this armbar counter and Malenko got dropped on the mat, but Dean got a chance to show off his counter abilities when he performed a release German suplex. 
More counters follow as Benoit finds a way out of the Texas Cloverleaf and he reverses a backslide with an armbar takedown. Dean makes it to the ropes before the Crippler crossface gets slapped on. And check this out, Chris counters a double underhook powerbomb by lifting Dean in the air. Dean then counters the counter with a sunset flip, but then Benoit counters Malenko with a pin attempt. If you take your eyes off the action for a single moment, you run the risk of missing some very good wrestling. Dean tries to jump on Benoit's shoulders, but Chris throws his opponent on the mat. We then see the cross face and Dean Malenko taps out. A great match here on Nitro, but Benoit doesn't get a chance to celebrate. Raven jumps in the ring and he performs the even flow on his sold out opponent. Dean Malenko squares up to Raven, but he too gets attacked and he finds himself locked in the rings of Saturn. So we had a great match, but both superstars got wiped out by the flock afterwards. Thanks Raven. Big Kurgan takes on Lance Diamond and Jimbo Cicero. Who? And over on Nitro, we get promos from JJ Dillon and Diamond Dallas Page. Alright, you know what they expect here with Kurgan taking on two job guys. You might know Lance Diamond better as Simon Diamond, by the way. But forget about the match and pay attention to this dude right here. Our guy's so hyped up to be at Raw that he dances like a maniac. He fucks around with his friend. He dances again. And again. Even when another fan puts a sign in front of him, he still finds a way to get on TV and the good times keep rolling. This episode of Raw is totally ruined for me now because I'll be keeping an eye on that dude throughout the entire show. Anyway, Kurgan destroys these two and we see the claw. The obvious question from the commentators was, who can stop Kurgan at the 1998 Royal Rumble? The commentators also fail to remember that Kurgan has the same real motherfucking problem that Steve Austin does. Is everyone just going to ignore Steve Blackman here? Is no one paying attention? Oh, Kurgan also rips apart a football helmet that was held together by duct tape. Absolute animal. He's an animal! An animal! An animal! Over on Nitro, JJ Dillon's had quite a few weeks playing the role of the man completely fucking up the world title picture. Right here though, he wants to talk about enforcing those rules that were laid out last week by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Nick Lambros. Yeah, that's it, Nick Lambros. Dillon says, things have to be fair across the board. Macho man Randy Savage hit Eric Bischoff last week and Eric Bischoff is not a wrestler. So in light of these new policies brought into WCW last week, JJ Dillon finds Randy Savage $5,000. Do you know how many Slim Jims one could buy with five grand? A lot. Randy Savage runs out and he's not happy. Randy wants Dylan to think twice about this and then Eric Bischoff comes out to calm the macho man down. Bischoff says it's okay, he'll pay the fine himself, but Randy says it's not about the money, it's about the principle. Savage then asks Mean Gene what did Kevin Nash say about him earlier again and again Mean Gene doesn't answer. The promo ends with Bischoff trying his best to get Randy away from Dylan before Randy does something he might regret later. DDP then gets interviewed after a commercial break and Dallas is jacked in Jacksonville. DDP promotes the main event of Thunder this week, Paige and Luger vs Macho Man Randy Savage and his good friend Kevin Nash. Mean Gene says there's a little friction between the heel team and DDP says he thought the NWO was for life. DDP also thought that Liz and Macho were for life and Mean Gene says you can't say that on TV. Dallas and Luger have something in common, their hatred for the New World Order. Lex is going to make the NWO hear the crack while in the rack and DDP will make them feel the bang when he... Uh, delivers the diamond cutter? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you guys know what happens in that match next week though. Marvelous Mark Merrow vs Vader on Raw, Booker T vs Perry Saturn on Nitro. Before the Raw match, we see China and HBK grabbing the driver of the big truck that's blocking DX's limo, but before they know it, Owen Hart's on top of DX's ride and he gets in through the sunroof. Owen gets in a few shots before Sean and China get in the limo, and there's a real bad edit job here that makes it look like even more people got in the limousine, but it's just footage from about 3 seconds earlier. Owen stuck in the limousine as HBK orders the driver to put his foot on the pedal, so it looks like the Blackheart's in a pretty tough spot at the moment. In the arena, Mark Merrow's mic doesn't work, but he talks anyway. I think what he's wanting to do is uh, introduce Sable. JR explains that Merrow's had a change of heart and he and Sable are on the same page, apparently. So Mark introduces his wife to the ring and ew, it's Sable looking unreal tonight. Sable gets in the ring, Merrow orders her to take off his robe, and Mark says that's all he ever wanted, he just wanted his wife to do what she's told. Mark says there'll be no more issues between he and his lovely wife just before Vader comes to the ring, and it doesn't take long for Sable to get involved in the match. Vader gets tripped up from the outside and this gives 
gives Miro a chance to hit a low blow. Another Sable then comes to the ring and I'm confused. Wasn't that Sable who just took off Miro's robe? Sable looks at herself on the outside and it's like the two doinks at WrestleMania 9. Undertaker vs Undertaker at SummerSlam 1994. Glacier in Sub-Zero. Hulk Hogan in a giant piece of shit. We just can't tell them apart. The one who I think is the fake Sable kicks the other Sable and Marvelous Mark decides to get this imposter away from the ring. This gives Vader a chance to take advantage on the outside and Mero gets thrown into the ring steps. Back inside the ring Vader prepares to deliver a Vader bomb and he doesn't notice Sable getting into the ring. Vader hits his finisher but then Sable detaches a boob from her chest and Vader gets smacked on the head. Sable's boob looks like a coconut, how on earth did she do that? Vader wins via disqualification and Mark Mero and Sable head to the back to have hot steamy coffee. After the match we see DX arriving at the arena and there's no sign of Owen Hart. The faction get out of the limo and they begin walking towards the locker room. After a commercial break we see Vader laid out in the back just like the Godwins were earlier on. It looks like Steve Austin's launched another attack. Over on Nitro, Booker T defends his TV title against former champion Perry Saturn. The crowd roars when Booker almost takes Perry's head off with a clothesline and Perry has to take a moment to get his wits about him. When the match resumes, Booker performs a forearm followed by a big super kick that sends Saturn to the outside. And I know I've said this a few times now but I have to say it again. I'm really enjoying Booker T on Nitro. As much as I like Harlem Heat, he's quickly becoming a highlight for me on the WCW side. Booker does a little damage on the outside but Perry takes the lead back inside the ring with a ridiculous release pump handle suplex followed by an exploder suplex. And it's Booker T this time who has to take a break on the outside. The break does Booker good as he comes back with his flying forearm but Saturn gets a boot up in the corner before covering Booker while using the ropes for leverage. 1, 2, 3, we have a new TV champion. Here comes Rick Martel and referee Mickey J complaining about the outcome for some reason or another. Jimmy Jet decides to restart the match. He's super late making it over to the competitors when Saturn covers Booker again and Booker kicks out. We then see the axe kick followed by the sidewalk slam, Booker performs the Harlem hangover and Booker T retains the television title. Do you think Saturn's gonna make a song and dance out of this the same way one Hulk Hogan would over his world title? No, of course not. So Saturn got robbed guys, get it trending, hashtag TV title conspiracy. Booker acknowledges that Rick Martel saved his ass here and Martel asks Booker for a title shot. Booker says he's got an open challenge thing going on apparently so Martel can expect to get his title shot very soon. The Giant and Nick Lambros have something to say next on Nitro while on Raw The Rock and D'Lo take on Mark Henry and Ken Shamrock. Mark Henry comes to the ring wearing a shirt that says Rocky sucks and Rock says Henry's managed to do something he shouldn't have done and that's pissed The Rock off. So The Rock promises to quote rip that shirt off Mark's fat ugly ass. The match starts off with Rock and Shamrock and Kenny Boy lands a jumping back elbow. Rock ducks a kick and Shamrock takes a few right hands before D'Lo gets tagged in. He goes down after a jumping back kick from the world's most dangerous man. But a little help from the IC champ allows D'Lo to hit a clothesline. Rock comes back and he performs his old finishing move, the devastating shoulder breaker. And then The Rock performs the people's elbow. After Shamrock kicks out of the follow up cover, Rocky gets in a few boots in the corner but Kenny Boy comes back with a power slam. He really needs to tag out at this point, but Shamrock stays in the match and he performs a Frankensteiner before taking out D'Lo and Kama on the apron. Rock takes the belly to belly and then Big Mark Henry stops Shamrock from performing the ankle lock. That's right, The Rock has recruited Mark Henry into the Nation of Domination. Henry performs a power slam on Shamrock and he drops a few elbows. D'Lo, Rock and Kama lay in the boots before Rock makes good on his promise and he rips Mark's shirt. And there it is, the world's most dangerous man is now a bad guy. Farouk stands on the entranceway and the nation's leader isn't amused. This Rocky kid's making big moves for the nation without consulting the group's leader. And it looks like things are gonna reach a boiling point between The Rock and Farouk very very soon. After a commercial break, Rock says this is the greatest day in the history of the nation. No, scratch that, the second greatest day, the actual greatest day was when The Rock joined. And Rock says he did this all for Farouk. Rock tells Kama and D'Lo to know their roles while calling the world's strongest man the greatest thing since sliced bread and Farouk doesn't say a single word. On Nitro, Nasty Nick Lambro says that the NWO nor Kevin Nash have given good reason as to why Big Sexy didn't perform at Starcade. 
So, Nash versus Giants gonna take place at Sold Out, and the NWO have to post a $1.5 million performance bond. If the NWO don't post it, then Nash will get suspended for one year. What a harsh little bastard. Nick says Bischoff's been spending Turner's money like water. So, as of today, Eric's funds have been cut off and he no longer has access to Uncle Ted's credit card. Giant reiterates that the NWO stand to lose a lot of money if Kevin Nash doesn't perform at Sold Out, but Giant doesn't care about the cash, he just wants Kevin to show up. Bischoff, Hogan, Nash and some geezer come down to the ring. Mean Gene says this is Henry Holmes, a well-known Hollywood attorney. And yeah, Henry Homeboy is indeed one of the top sports attorneys in all of California. So Eric gets told to stop spending Turner's money and he comes out with fucking Phoenix Wright. Holmes says he talked to Hogan and Nash, and the NWO will put up the required performance guarantee. But there's a catch. WCW and the Giant must match the 1.5 million while guaranteeing that the Giant won't touch or come near Kevin Nash on the road to sold out. If he does, then he forfeits the money. Giant says he's a patient man, so he accepts the deal. Big Sexy then gets in the ring and he gets in the Giant's face. He screams, who's the true Giant now? And there's nothing the Giant can do about it. Giant smiles before leaving the ring, and Eric Bischoff calls Harry Holmes the world champion of all attorneys. Some might say this was all unnecessary, but I think it was fine. It adds another extra layer to the Jan vs Kevin Nash rivalry, but it does also feel like it was only done to get this attorney on TV, so I don't know. D-Generation X cut a promo on Raw next, on Nitro Lex Luger takes on Hugh Morris. Triple H addresses Owen Hart while Shawn Michaels shows off his weight belt. Hunter says Owen was always that little nugget who would keep coming back after so many flushes. But around 20 minutes ago, Owen got the big flush and he's now in some sewer going to god knows where. Owen couldn't step up to the DX fraternity, and Owen Hart failed his finals. Speaking of finals, Hunter says the sorority girls in the arena tonight can pay a visit to old Dean Helmsley, and Hunter will give them some help. Hunter has the tips to get a passing grade, and if they want, Triple H can give more than the tip, he can give the whole thing. HBK thinks this is fucking genius work here guys. HBK addresses Mike Tyson, he says Tyson isn't the baddest man on the planet in HBK's world, because Tyson has never had to shimmy to the sound of sweet chin music. If Tyson sticks his nose in HBK's business at the Royal Rumble, then HBK will dance all over Mike's pretty little face. Sean then wants to talk about Kane, but he gets cut off by Owen Hart on the Titan Tron. Owen reminds DX that he's a survivor, he's not out yet, and he still plans on making DX's lives a living hell. The thing is, he really hasn't been doing a good job of it recently, has he? Hunter says Owen's a big tough guy when he's talking on the Titantron, so why doesn't he bring his ass out and fight like a man? Owen's like, say no more fam, and he steps out into the arena, and he calls Hunter a gutless bastard. Owen doesn't get a chance to fight DX though, because officials break things up. So, the question now is, what was HBK about to say about the big red machine? On Nitro, Lex Luger defeated Hugh Morris, but Morris put up a decent fight. He surprised Lex with a big jumping wheel kick and Lex replied with a power slam. Morris then got a little dirty by attacking Lex during a break, and he stood on Lex's throat in the corner too, so any good sportsmanship was quickly thrown out the window. Fans thought the end was near when Lex began hitting his clotheslines, but Morris pulled off a clothesline of his own from the second rope before going up for a big splash. Lex moves out of the way, the total package locks in the torture rack, and Morris gives it up. Miss Elizabeth shows up and she's screaming for Lex for some unexplained reason. She's got tears in her eyes, it sounds like she's upset with Randy and she needs Luger's help. It was all a setup, of course. Macho attacks the total package, Liz even gets in on the action with a slap across the face, and the attack ends when Dallas Page shows up to chase Macho and Liz away. Some cheeky bastard in the audience snatches DDP's baseball cap from his head, but he gives it back when Dallas threatens to hit the son of a bitch with a diamond cutter. The dirty old assholes take on a mystery tag team next on Raw while Chris Jericho battles Steve McMichael on Nitro. Eightball and Skull make their way down to the ring, and then Jim Cornette shows up. He reminds folks at home about Jeff Jarrett's NWA North American Championship win last week, while also saying the NWA has a great tradition in tag team wrestling also. 
Cornette says the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express stood head and shoulders above all the rest, and tonight Cornette has brought Ricky and Robert to the war zone. Jim Cornette walking to the ring with the Rock and Roll Express. My my. The last time we saw Ricky and Robert was on Nitro, and here they are getting ready to take on a few biker Michael likers. This would have appealed to a certain subset of wrestling fans, but it sure didn't have mass appeal for the same reasons I explained last week. Cornette explains on commentary that he and the Midnight Express could never get rid of Ricky and and Robert, and in the name of bringing back tradition to pro wrestling, he decided to align himself with a tag team that, at one time, Cornette despised. Morton takes a big sidewalk slam before tagging out, Gibson takes a big boot, Ricky then trips up Skull from the outside, and we see a little double team action as Jim Cornette talks about Ricky and Robert's achievements. They've beaten the Midnight Express, they've beaten the Freebirds, they've beaten the Horsemen, the five time NWA World Tag Team Champions have beaten every great team in wrestling since getting together in 1980. And speaking of the tag titles, Cornette mentions that The Rock and Roll are the current NWA World Tag Team Champions. The match breaks down and the biker Michael Lackers get the better of Ricky and Robert. When Ricky gets clotheslined over the top rope, Cornette says that's an illegal maneuver so he leaves the commentary desk and he smacks an asshole with his tennis racket right in front of the referee. That's gonna be a DQ, I'm afraid, and hey, these NWA guys sure need a lot of help, don't they? Cornette takes a right hand from 8-ball, but it's a 3-on-2 advantage here. Cornette gets his ass back up and he continues to use his tennis racket as the rock and roll hit a double dropkick on Skull, and the NWA guys decide to leave the ring when change runs in. What do you think of this NWA stuff on Raw's War? Let me know in the comments. On Nitro, Chris Jericho gets overpowered twice by Big Mongo and Jericho hits the mat after taking a few shoulder blocks. Big Mongo lays the kicks in. Jericho does manage to get a boot up in the corner and land a missile dropkick, but Steve answers with a big sidewalk slam. Jericho's able to swing it around again in his favour though and he performs a top rope hurricane runner, and Mongo's bump here was absolutely fine. Maybe slightly delayed, but I've seen way, way worse. And Jericho then tries to cover Mongo for the win, but Steve kicks out. The three point stance tackle puts Jericho down, and there's not a lot Chris can do at this point. A low drop kick gives us a great comedic Mongo bump, but Steve ends up putting Jericho away with the Mongo spike. It looks like he slipped here too, and his head got stuck right in Jericho's ball bag. Easy there, big man. It's another loss for Chris Jericho, but Chris's night is not over just yet. Rey Mysterio vs Juventud Guerrero is up next on Nitro, on Raw we have got Mankind vs Goldust. We see a pre-taped promo from Cactus Jack before the Raw match. Jack's standing in Beaver Stadium and he wants to talk about Terry Funk. Jack says he and Terry had wars in the past, death matches, barbed wire, brutal matches that are so violent they'll never be shown in the United States. After Jack and Funk mutilated each other, a strange thing happened. Foley felt closer to his opponent than anyone else he's ever known, so when Foley needed help against the outlaws, he reached out to Terry Funk. Jack says Funk's decision to wear a pair of pantyhose over his head and call himself Chainsaw Charlie is a little ridiculous, but to each their own. And as far as the outlaws are concerned, those boys are now in a situation they are not prepared for. Foley hopes the outlaws don't think the upcoming violence is some sort of punishment. He hopes the outlaws can see it as a chance to get to know Cactus Jack and Terry Funk a little better. Mankind then comes to the ring to take on Goldust, only no, it's not Goldust, it's Dude Love. Wait, does that mean that that isn't the real Mankind in the ring? There isn't much of a match here at all really, Mankind applies the mandible claw almost immediately and then Steve Austin hits the ring. Both Mankind and Dude Dust take Stone Cold stunners, and Austin then grabs JR's headset. Stone Cold says someone asked him at the airport if he really thinks he can win the Royal Rumble, and Austin said, oh hell yeah. On WCW Thunder last week, Juventud Guerrero defeated Ultimo Dragon to become the new Cruiserweight Champion, so the title's on the line in this next Nitro matchup. Chris Jericho's still in the ring and he's ripping into the audience, saying he's a fool for being a role model to all these fans. When Chris realises the cameras are rolling and he's on live TV, he quickly changes his tune and he says being a role model for the fans is one of the greatest things he's ever accomplished in his life and he takes it very seriously. So awesome. Jericho apologises for his reactions over the past few weeks and once again he promises it will never ever happen again. Mysterio then comes to the ring for his match and Jericho wants to know why Rey interrupted him. Rey says he's just here for his scheduled match.
match. Jericho then keeps his cool and he apologises. He says he hopes Ray wins the belt and he wishes him good luck, and then Chris attacks Mysterio. Ray takes two backbreakers and he tops the mat while locked in the lion tamer. Hoovy's music then plays, and remember last week I talked about Hoovy sometimes botching moves? Against the new champion, Hoovitude Guerrera. He won't get it tonight. Yeah, he botched getting into the ring this time. The whole arena laughs, and even though he's wearing a mask, you can still feel Hoovy's embarrassment. Not good, brother, not good. Jericho says to Hoovy, go get him, champ, and the bell sounds. And again, there isn't much of a match here. It's over in 60 seconds. That's what she said. Guerrero puts Mysterio away with a Hoovy driver, followed by the 450 splash. Even with this easy victory and essentially an easy payday, I'm sure this is a night that Mr. Guerrero would want to forget. Takamichi Noku and Scott Taylor vs Los Bariquas on Raw, Hulk Hogan cuts a promo on Nitro. Before the Raw match, the big rumour gets confirmed by Vince McMahon. Mike Tyson's been invited to the 1998 Raw Rumble, and also, Mike Tyson's gonna appear on Raw next week. There's a huge announcement that's gonna get made on live TV, and it's gonna involve Mike Tyson. It's a bit of a weird tag team match here on Raw, especially this late into the show, but it quickly makes sense when JR and King talk about Mike Tyson throughout most of the bout. Viewers were expected to digest this Tyson news, and so the WWF put on a match that wouldn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. It starts off with Taylor dropkicking Jesus out of the ring and he performs a baseball slide afterwards. I'm not sure if Scott was trying to do the Ultimo Dragon corner headstand here, but whatever he was trying to do, it didn't work out too well, and his flying clothesline afterwards wasn't too hot either. Savio and Taka do a little work next, and Michinoku takes the corner wheel kick and a big power bomb from the leader of Los Bariquas. We then see a pretty sweet running knee strike from Jesus, but Taka makes the tag after Jesus misses a running corner attack. Scott Taylor comes back in all fired up, and he and Taka work together to clean house. But the numbers game comes into play when Miguel Perez Jr. distracts the referee, and Scott gets his worm smashed on the top turnbuckle. Jesus performs a reverse suplex off the top, and Los Bariquas win the match. The faction then attack Taka and Taylor after the match, and this prompts Owen Hart to hit the ring and get a little revenge for last week. Owen breaks Triple H's crutch while attacking Los Bariquas, and Owen invites Triple H to come to the ring afterwards. Hunter doesn't show up. On Nitro, Hulk Hogan says when you're in the NWO, you calculate every move. Henry Holmes is sorting out the Kevin Nash vs Giant stuff, but Homeboy's also gonna deal with a few other NWO matters, mainly the world title problem. Everyone saw Hulk beat Sting 1-2-3 on that Nitro tape, so tomorrow morning, at 8am sharp, Henry Holmes is going to a fucking federal court to get Hollywood Hogan his world title back. Some judge is gonna sit and watch Hogan beat Sting on Nitro, and when that happens, Hogan and the NWO will take WCW for everything they have. When you're in the NWO, you're just too sweet, you know the drill, and it's getting a bit silly at this point, isn't it? Just a bit. Jim Neidhart gets interviewed on Nitro, while DX cut a promo on Raw. Michael Cole reminds HBK that he promised some big announcement about The Undertaker's family earlier on, and Cole wonders if Sean's gonna make that announcement right now. Sean says everyone knows Paul Bear and Kane have parted ways and Kane's wandered off all alone. HBK says DX are glad to stand in the ring with open arms to accept Kane into the group, so the newest member of D Generation X is none other than the Big Red Machine. The lights go out in the arena and The Undertaker's music plays. The dead man comes to the ring and Taker says he'd appreciate it if Sean left his family out of the conversation. Sean and The Undertaker's problems have nothing to do with the Phenom's little brother, and the WWF Champion should really be more concerned about the Royal Rumble and The Undertaker punching a 6 inch hole in the middle of Michael's forehead. Taker grabs Sean by the throat, he then turns his attention to China, and when China goes up for a choke slam, the crowd go crazy. But the move doesn't happen thanks to Triple H hitting Taker with his crutch. Sean's then able to hit Sweet Chin Music on his Royal Rumble opponent, and Taker gets destroyed afterwards. HBK attacks Taker again with the crutch, and he lays in a ton of right hands, but then the lights go out again, and we hear Kane's music. The newest member of DX walks down to the ring, and he goes to attack HBK. Kane hasn't joined the group after all. Kane chases DX back up the rampway, he then turns around and he extends his hand to his brother. Taker gets down on one knee and he too reaches out his hand, so it's pretty much confirmed here that The Undertaker and Kane are on the same page, and the brothers have set aside their differences. It's a great moment here, and the crowd loved it. The Undertaker now has a little backup as he heads into the casket match at the Royal Rumble. 
Jim Neidhart gets interviewed in his very first Nitro appearance and Mean Gene wants to know Jim's thoughts on this Ric Flair vs Bret Hart business. It was confirmed on Thunder that Bret Hart vs Flair is gonna take place at Sold Out by the way. The Anvil can't believe the statements Flair made. Flair's a tremendous wrestler but he's not the best, Bret's the best. Flair comes out and he shakes the Anvil's hand while welcoming the Anvil to WCW. Flair says Jim's one of the baddest men to enter the sport but through bloodlines and marriage a man can get under the thumb of a woman. The Anvil's maybe saying what he's saying because he's married to Brett's sister. So if Jim thinks Brett's a better wrestler than Ric Flair, then Anvil better say it to Rick's face. Anvil says Bret Hart is the best wrestler and Rick doesn't take it too well. Flair wants to know if Jim's got his gear on and Jim says he was born with his gear on. Okay. Jim wants to fight Flair, Flair wants to do it too, so Rick says he's gonna go and get his gear. Flair walks back out, still in the same clothes, and Jim gets knocked out with those brass knucks that don't look like brass knucks but we'll call them brass knucks anyway. The referee gets taken out too and the nature boy lays in more shots before getting a genius idea. He's gonna apply the ring post figure 4, a signature Bret Hart move. Bret runs down and Flair tries to run away, Bret catches the nature boy and a fist fight breaks out. Flair eventually escapes though and Bret Hart gets into the ring to check on the anvil. So yeah we've got Ric Flair vs Bret Hart to look forward to on pay per view, it should be good. We've got the Royal Rumble draw to end Raw tonight and on Nitro we've got the Outsiders vs Rick and Scott Steiner. Last week it appeared that Scott Steiner made a conscious decision not to let his brother perform the Steiner Bulldog but we weren't too sure. On Thunder the same thing happened again so yeah anything remotely subtle about this has already been thrown away unfortunately and that's a shame. It's one more for the good guys when Scott conducts his survey, the Steiners make their way down to the ring and here we go. The Steiners tag titles are on the line in this Nitro main event. The Outsiders laugh their asses off when Hall throws his toothpick at Scotty Steiner. Hall gets shoved to the mat after the first lockup and Steiner counters a body slam with a body slam of his own. Hall takes punches from both Steiner brothers before taking a double underhook powerbomb and when Kevin Nash runs in to save his buddy, he ends up getting double suplexed. Looks like the Steiners are doing just fine as Nash and Hall get a little encouragement from Hollywood Hogan. Macho Man Randy Savage then shows up and he wants to fight Nash. Hogan and Hall are stuck in the middle here and they both try to calm Savage down so the match can resume. Hall gets destroyed in the corner by the dogface gremlin so he tags out and now Big Nash is gonna do a bit of work. The crowd are clapping in unison as Nash and Rick circle the ring. Rick goes down after a knee strike and we see the Nash back elbow in the corner. Rick gets a boot up in the opposite corner and he performs a second rope stanner line but Nash kicks out of the follow up cover. Rick performs a scoop power slam on Big Nash and it looks great. Hall and Scotty Steiner then come in and Steiner takes a choke slam. Hall can't help himself and he mocks the giant afterwards and this leads to Steiner performing an overhead belly to belly. This match has been pretty good so far. It ends with Nash and Rick in the ring and Rick counters snake eyes. Rick then goes for his second rope bulldog but Hogan pulls the rope and Rick goes down. The referee didn't see this. Scott rushes out of the ring to fight with Hogan but this means brother Rick's all alone. Rick gets choked in the ring and he takes a fall away slam by the time Scott gets back in his corner. Big Nash then delivers a sidewalk slam and Scott Steiner complains when Hall comes back in and the outsiders cheat to get the upper hand. Nash hits Rick from the apron, Scotty Steiner grabs the referee, Nash inadvertently hits his partner with a big boot and Scott falls into Randy Anderson and Scotty Steiner. With the referee out and Scotty once again on the outside, Kevin Nash performs a low blow on Rick and he goes for the cover. Randy Savage then tries to elbow drop his own NWO teammate but Nash moves out of the way and Rick takes all the impact. The referee wakes up, he counts to three and the outsiders become the new tag team champions. There's no time to celebrate though, Nash goes after Savage. Randy spits on Big Sexy and Nitro fades out as Hulk Hogan tries to stop Nash and Savage from fighting each other. This was a good Nitro main event too, they were given plenty of time and although NW interference played a role once again, it really wasn't all that bad. WWF superstars are in the ring for the Royal Rumble draw and uh, I can't see Steve Blackman. Maybe they were too worried he'd just wreck everyone and the pay per view would have to get cancelled. Ken Shamrock walks down to the ring and he starts fighting with Mark Henry. This results in a brawl breaking out but everyone stops fighting when the Honky Tonk Man's music plays in the arena. That's right, the Honky Tonk Man's gonna take part in the Royal Rumble match. 
Cactus Jack then makes his way down to the ring, and then Steve Austin's music plays. Austin isn't going to walk down the ramp, he instead appears from the audience and he gives Phineas a stunner. This results in another massive brawl breaking out and oh shit, there's Steve Blackman right there, the real motherfucking problem of the Royal Rumble. Austin gets attacked on the rampway by Rocky, D'Lo and uh, Savio Vega, and Raw ends with these three guys beating Austin up on the rampway while the other competitors fight in the ring. Not a single number was drawn and that's a good thing, it wouldn't be any fun if we knew the entrance orders. It's another win for Nitro this week simply because they had better matches. Malenko vs Benoit, Booker vs Saturn and The Outsiders vs The Steiner Brothers were all good bouts and they were all given decent time. Watching Austin stun everyone on Raw and the stuff with The Undertaker and Kane were good moments too, but Nitro destroyed Raw this week from an in-ring perspective, so yeah, I had no issues picking a winner this week. Raw's on 52 points, Nitro's on 51 points and we've had 13 ties. In the television ratings, Nitro wins with a 4.6 while Raw gets a 3.4. The 1998 Raw Rumble's up next on the channel, so turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel and watch it as soon as possible. It's more than likely going to get taken down from YouTube and I'll have to go through the usual nonsense to get it back online, so please do what you can to watch it ASAP. On Nitro next week we've got Juventud Guerrera vs Chris Jericho, Hulk Hogan challenging the Giant to a main event match, and we've also got Booker T versus Mor oh shit <laughs> yeah Booker T versus Mortis. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one and take care.